Hi everyone, it's Melissa and today I am starting a reading vlog. Please ignore if you are swaying a bit. My tripod is not as stable as I thought it was. So this reading vlog comes from your suggestions. A while back I posted a very quick and dirty bookshelf tour and I asked what I should pick up next as I am trying desperately to reduce my physical DVR and read what I already own. So I think from that video I got suggestions for 13 different books and I've whittled that down to a more manageable pile of possibilities. So I eliminated any books that I thought were too long to really work in a reading vlog or the subject matter or tone just didn't fit um, with what I wanted for the reading vlog. So this leaves us with six books and the first you'll see I've already started. I'm like two chapters in, chapter in, and that's The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Sutterfield. So this one made the list because it's the only book that got two mentions in my comments, so I figured I had to read this one. The next one on my pile is The Wonder by Emma Donahue. This I'm putting on the list because this also came up for the booktube spin for me for this round. So I'm supposed to read this by the end of June anyway, so I figured I might as well include it. Then the next four are just ones that people mentioned that I thought would just work for a reading vlog. So we have Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein. We also have Rant by Chuck uh, Polnick. We have uh, a nonfiction book, Working Stiff, by Judy Melanick and TJ Mitchell. So it's about a medical examiner. And the last on the pile of possibilities is Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. That's my pile of possibilities. I'm starting with the 13th tale and I will check in when I have something to say. finished reading The Thirteenth Tale last night and I loved this book. I'm gonna put it up here and tell you the things that I loved about it. This is going to be a spoiler free vlog I've decided um, so I will not say anything um, too much about like where the plot goes and like that kind of thing but the general premise is this very reclusive novelist, very famous and very reclusive novelist, has written a letter to this biographer, this kind of no-name biographer who's not really a biographer, but kind of dabbles in it at an amateur level, sends her a letter saying she wants to tell her life story to her. And this novelist is also famously, uh, I guess you could just say a liar. <laughs> like, She's given multiple interviews and she always changes the story. So no one knows what her life story actually is. And the book in terms of like atmosphere and the writing is very kind of timeless. I'm actually not even sure I know at what point in time this book takes place. Like we have the present day and then we have the the past as this author is relaying her life story. So it kind of goes back and forth, but even in like the present day timeline, there's no real indication. Like I, it wouldn't be like present day now because there are some things that happen that like you would just call someone on your smartphone that like doesn't have it in this book. There's a lot of like sending letters back and forth and, and that kind of thing. So I feel like there's no email. There's no any of that. I kind of feel like it's at least... 1980s or earlier it could be the 1950s like I have no idea what the present day is in that situation there's probably some context clues that I've missed but it has this kind of 
timeless quality that I actually really like. This, I mean, this is a book for classic lovers. Um, I guess you could maybe count it kind of as historical fiction because it's not present day, but you don't really know what time period it is. And the writing harkens back to those classics. It's very descriptive, very rich. Even like the way that certain sentences are structured, it's very reminiscent of like some older literature, um, which I loved. The storyline, so there's mystery involved as this young biographer is trying to hunt for what the truth is. You have a sense that maybe um, the author, Miss Winter, is not the most reliable of narrators. Maybe she's holding things back. Um, is anything she's saying the truth or is she obfuscating certain things? Um, and there's, there's a mystery involved in her, in her, in her backstory. And it, it almost feels like a suspense novel of the, of earlier times, like, uh, I've forgotten the name, like a sensation novel. It kind of feels like a sensation novel. And so if you're into classics at all, um, pick this up. Like, oh my god. It has a very gothic feel. There's a lot of reference to Jane Eyre, and Jane Eyre plays kind of a, a big role. Not a big role, but it's it's a certain, it's a work of literature that gets brought up over and over again, and you can kind of see the similarities. Not exactly directly related to the plot in Jane Eyre. Certain elements, certain themes, like of isolation, um, and yeah, so Jane Eyre is, is kind of brought up over and over again. There are other books that are brought up because obviously both of the main characters, both the author and the biographer, are um, like huge book lovers. And especially the biographer, her name is Margaret. She doesn't really read contemporary novels. She only reads uh, classics. And um, so yeah, so Jane Eyre is brought up a lot. Although this also reminded me, I think this book was also mentioned, but not as heavily as Jane Eyre. It also reminded me of Wuthering Heights in terms of the atmosphere and also the kind of overall um, like theme of this family in decay, I guess you could say. Um, let's just say there's a lot going on with Miss Winter's uh, backstory in terms of her, her family and everything that went on there. And yeah, I just, all of those things I loved. The writing, the kind of like timeless nature of it, it felt like a classic, it felt like a, a really great sensation novel, it had this gothic atmosphere. I just, yeah, I just loved it. How is any other novel going to measure up to this during this reading vlog? So, actually, let me bring down the rest of my pile because we're going to pick a new book. So we have <laughs> Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein, Rant by Chuck Palahniuk, Working Stuff, which is a non-fiction, by Judy Melanick and T.J. Mitchell, Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente, and The Wonder by Emma Donahue. So th that's what's left on my pile. So I really do want to read The Wonder quite a lot, um, and it's something I'm supposed to read by the end of June anyway. However, my, my worry is that I think it'll be too similar to The Thirteenth Tale. I suspect it will be. I actually don't know. I've never read any Emma Donahue. I don't know what her writing style is like. But this is historical fiction, and I I just have a suspicion that it will feel similar, I don't in either in tone or in writing style or in some significant way to The Thirteenth Tale, even though the stories are very different. I feel like it might be too similar in those other ways. So even though I really want to read The Wonder, I, 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 I almost want to more so read something that's going to be very different from The Thirteenth Tale, so I'm not comparing too much. I'm not really in the mood for a nonfiction at this point. Let's just move that aside. I think I'm going to go with The Palmic. My reasoning for this is I know this is going to be very, very different. This is about a serial killer. And the serial killer, he dies in this... Uh, car crash. Then his friends and acquaintances uh, gather testimony to build an oral history of his short violent life. So this is told, I guess, as an oral history. And although I'm not very familiar with Chuck Palahniuk's writing, I've only read a few essays of his. 
just based on like what I know about him and having watched Fight Club, I feel like the writing is going to be sparser in description. I'm guessing this is going to be like more sharp, um, maybe more like sarcastic or pithy, um, punchier. So yeah, I just feel like this is going to feel very different. So it might be the wiser choice. So yeah, we're gonna we're going to try that. Sadly, I think I am going to DNF rant. So I was right about the writing being very different, very sharp, punchy, um, which was what I was looking to do because I wanted to create some distance from the Thirteenth Tale. However, I I I just can't deny that I prefer richer writing, that I prefer more beautiful writing, and that things that are more sharp, um, biting, isn't exactly always my type of writing. That being said, I didn't hate the writing in this, but I just, uh, it's not drawing me in, the story's not drawing me in. So it's about this serial killer. I didn't really get very far, in all honesty. I read some during my lunch break and I've just decided, you know what, I'm not going to power through. I'm going to move on to something else. Um, but so essentially it's this oral history. But the thing is, I, I can't make heads or tails of who's talking, even though it has like the name and like who they are. I he's moving from one account to another too quickly. It's too fragmented. It's too jumpy around. I want to sit with a character, let them tell a bit of the story, and then move on to someone else's perspective. It's not like I need a whole chapter, but give me like a page. Give me something to sink my teeth into. I am moving on to probably what I should have picked at the beginning, honestly, if I'm listening to my gut, and that's The Wonder by Emma Donahue. I wanted to stay away from it because I felt like it might be a little too samey with the 13th tale, but the stories are completely different and I don't know if this is going to be gothic. I don't, I don't know what kind of story this is going to be. loved this book. I was just like in tears. There is a, a girl, she's 11 years old, named Anna. And her family, her village, everyone is saying that she has gone four months surviving only on water, that she has not eaten anything in four months. And this takes place in like rural Ireland in I think it's 1859. Like ten or so years after the potato famine. Her community is very religious, very Roman Catholic. They, her family, her village, are touting this as a miracle, that she doesn't need food to survive. And our protagonist, Lib, is a nurse from England who has been hired to basically uh, set watch and see if this is a miracle or not. So she and another nurse who is a nun have been tasked with this. So they work in shifts, basically keeping 24 hours watch over Anna to see if anyone's sneaking her food, to see if she is stealing food, um, to see if this is a hoax or if this is a real miracle. Now Lib is very um, grounded in like reality, rationalism, is not religious at all. And so from the get-go, she's going in there thinking, okay, my, my job is to find the culprit. Who, who is perpetuating this, this fraud? I loved Lib as a character. So that's one big plus in this book is the characters, not just Lib, but all of the secondary characters too are just, they're all very interesting characters. I love Lib's character development. Um, the character of Anna is also very interesting and of the nun who we don't really get her perspective and she's, she's kind of kept it at arm's length but there's an interesting element there of not knowing where the where the nun stands because obviously she's a, a nun she's religious does she think this is a miracle does she not 
Lib and the other nurse are not really supposed to talk about their opinions. They're just supposed to do their shifts and, and get on with it, essentially. But all those characters are all really well drawn. Lib's character arc, I thought, was great. It was so interesting. I'm not going to spoil this, but it was interesting to see like how she changes. You get to learn more and more about Anna and her family. And I also loved the setting, like this rural Irish community. I'm a big fan of really strong setting and like a really strong sense of place in books. And this definitely has that. There were a lot of really interesting points of conflict here. So between like religion and non-religion and there's a lot of really great writing in here great themes about like religious fervor and how, how far that can go and Lib is incensed um in parts of this book as Anna's health is deteriorating furious that people with like really strong religious convictions could let a child like starve herself there's just so much going on on that I could do a whole video <laughs> on like the kind of like religious conflict in here. There's also conflict between like Lib being an outsider and and like the tight-knit community that this village is and that being very strongly connected of course to Lib being English coming to Ireland and the whole history there. She's totally ignorant to that so there's a, a, a lot of cool dynamics there around like the English and the Irish, of course religion, about like morality and responsibility in terms of as a, as a parent um, and like Lib's thoughts on Anna's parents and what they are or are not doing to help their daughter end her fast. Sorry, there was a, <laughs> a ring at the door, a parcel came, so I don't know where I was. I think I've mentioned most of the things I wanted to mention. Um, it, it just had so much I like about it. It was also quite a a quiet story for the most part. But at the same time, it was super page turning because you just want to find out what is happening. How is this? How has this child survived for so long? Is her health going to keep getting worse? Is she going to starve herself? Is someone going to intervene? Is someone intervening? Is she getting food? Why has she decided to start this fast in the first place because it's, it's kind of unclear from the get-go. I loved it so much. Now I am going to pick another book but I am going to take today off reading and maybe even tomorrow because The Wonder is the kind of book that I need to like process. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little break but I am going to pick my book now and I already know that um, I don't want to read Starship Troopers right now. I don't want to read a nonfiction right now after the wonder that which got a little bit intense for me <laughs> um I need something a bit lighthearted. so we are going to go with Space Opera by Catherine M. Valente. Do you ever get in just a busy season of life and because you're so busy your house just seemingly falls apart overnight? Normally what happens if I get really busy is like the kitchen will kind of like turn into a disaster zone or like you know a room will, but it's, it's my entire house. My bedroom, my child's bedroom, the kitchen, the entryway, the dining room, the living room, the laundry room. Enjoy this b-roll of me cleaning at least some of my house. I enjoy watching uh, like sped up cleaning vlogs, so hopefully some of you will find this uh, satisfying to watch. So all I did was clean and tidy the dining room um, and the rest will just have to wait <laughs> until later this week. But I did want to talk about uh, space opera before I close out the vlog. I'm only about halfway through, but I want to get this vlog up um, tomorrow if I can. So I will share my thoughts 
on the space opera so far. So I've heard this described as like Hitchhiker's Guide and it very much is in that realm. It's a comedy science fiction. It has some like social commentary in there so I can see the comparison. It's a lot of fun. Like I'm enjoying it. Um, the only things I really have any criticism about are like the writing is very dense. Like every sentence is just like chock full of like a lot of words. I could probably flip to any random page and find an example of what I'm talking about. So this is like the second sentence I came across and it's exactly what I'm talking about. Um, at the very least, you'd have thought to get a nice shark's heart sausage in at one of Blue Rutu's finer bistros before the low gravity, high pressure atmosphere and the global rather well-founded cynicism on the subject of strangers started rather dramatically forcing blood out of the ends of your hair. Like, it's just bam, 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 bam. And like almost every sentence is like that. So um, like I said, I'm enjoying the book, but I picked this up thinking it would be a really fast read, like fast, fun, floofy kind of read. And it's definitely a fun read, but it's not fast. Like I have to keep rereading sentences to get everything out of them. You know what it reminds me of? It's like when Weird Al does like a rap parody and he's like spouting all of these lyrics and like the su the song is funny it's fun but you kind of have to listen to it like five or six times before you get all of the jokes that are in the lyrics that's kind of what this is so i guess i didn't even explain what the premise is but essentially um aliens have come to earth because humans are getting to that point where they are getting like close to space travel and when species get to that point they could become a problem and there have been like lots of wars in the galaxies when species get to this point they have to partake in this competition and if they fail if they come in last place they are annihilated because they are monsters and clearly shouldn't be allowed to continue um and if they don't come in last place if they succeed in any measure then they are deemed sentient and are allowed to like live on basically and the competition to prove whether a species is sentient or not is a music competition <laughs> so this is like i don't know eurovision meets hitchhiker's guide or something and um the funny part is like the aliens come like one of the alien races comes and they um, have this like list of possibilities, like musicians they think would really do well. And it's like Skrillex and Yoko Ono and like Donna Summer, just like the most random <laughs> list you've ever heard of. Um, but in this, it, it doesn't really give a year, but it's like in the near-ish future. Um, and basically all of those people are dead and the only people left, because the, the aliens are like kind of out of date with what's popular music on earth at the moment and the only um band that is on the list that is still alive is uh this group that they there has been right so it's basically these this group has to like get the band back together after like 15 years of doing nothing and try to like save humanity so that's the premise so obviously it's very like fun there's like a lot of commentary here about like how awful humans are because the whole point is that we have to prove that we're not monsters and like that's going to be kind of hard to do because we've been monsters that's the end of the vlog if you've read any of the books i talked about please leave a comment below i would love to have a chat about any of these books as always and thank you so much for watching and we'll chat soon take care bye